Do you know, one of the things I really enjoy doing while I'm out in the wood is to cook a meal. I don't claim to be a great chef. In fact, I don't know that I'm all that good, but I've had some fun and I've turned out some pretty reasonable meals. Having the right equipment to cook your meal is all important. It's not just about the heat source, whether it's an open fire, a firebox type stove, or a gas uh, propane stove. You also have to have the right pots and pans. And that's a selection process that we all go through trying to find the ones that are going to work best for us. So when I had an opportunity to review the cook sets, the ultra cook kits from the firebox stove, you know I agreed. So in this video, we're going to take a look at the larger 10 inch cook kit and the smaller 8 inch cook kit. If you're interested in hearing my thoughts on these, keep watching. All right, a couple things just before we get started. First, I'd like to thank Steve at the Firebox Stove for sending both of these cook kits out to me so that I could share them with you. Now, the backstory is, is I had originally asked for the larger cook kit not realizing just how big it was. And that was a few years ago and Steve set it out and I have used it. We'll talk about my experiences in a few moments time. So recently I had an opportunity to get my hands on the smaller cook kit. So I thought this is as good a time as any to share both with you. Now, the next thing I wanna mention is that this is not a complete review. This is more of a show and tell an overview, a preview, however you want to look at it. And the reason being is, although I've used the cook kits, I have not used them as extensively as I would have liked to before I can give you a full on review. If you watch Steve's video, and if you haven't, I certainly encourage that you do so, then you'll know that these things are really versatile. That's the, probably the easiest way to describe it. There are so many things you can do with these kits and it doesn't have to be over a wood stove. It can be over an alcohol stove or a gas stove. So my experiences, well, I'll explain them as I go along, but yeah, you're going to see these appear a lot more in future videos. But for now, I just wanted to give you an overview of what's involved in the two kits I have in case you're looking for something for yourself. All right. Just in the rare case, you're not familiar with these. What we have is a set of nesting pans that will all go together to create a cook kit that you can change into everything from eating plates to a fry pan to an oven and so on. And uh, so they're all designed by Steve to nest together in a small bag like this. So one of the other things I want to point out is that even though this is the ultra cook kit, you can buy these components all individually, or at least the most of them. However, for your best bang for buck, you want to combine as much in as possible. Well, one, so that the shipping doesn't hit you when you will eventually want to add to it. I can almost guarantee you that. So you might as well buy as much as you can afford to the first time out. Trust me, you'll use the components. I didn't think I would, but you will. Now, I'm going to start with the larger of the two kits for a couple of reasons. Number one, I've had this the longest. I've used it the most. In fact, in full disclosure, I haven't even used the smaller kit yet. And there's a reason for that. It actually only just arrived. The larger kit I've used, but I've used it car camping. To me, this is huge. This is something that my wife and I use together on car camping, but um, it's not something I would take backpacking unless I was going to go with a couple of people who can make use of the extra size of this. All right, let's get started. So one of the things right off the top is this high quality Kodura 500 bag. Super well made, super well constructed, bomb proof as they say, and worth having it because you got to carry them in something. So you might as well get the bag that they're available in. And they fit in just nicely. Now, as I said, I'll, I'll only talk briefly about each of the items because it's an overview, not a full-time review. This is the 10 inch kit, by the way, and they refer to them as the large and small or the 10 and the eight. So this is the 10 inch kit. This is the larger cutting board. Hindsight, I think I would have gone with the next size down cutting board only so that it would fit down inside a little bit better. But nothing wrong with this. It's a good size cutting board. You used it a few times. Um, what can I say? It's good. It's just great quality. This is the shallow camp plate. Now these are hard anodized and I'll talk more about anodization in a moment. These are hard anodized so they can in fact be used as a fry pan all by themselves. There's no reason why not. Now why would you want to use one like this? Well maybe for pancakes or something you don't need the depth of the other one. It's nice to know that you can use each of these items in multiple ways not just for the most obvious like 
eating off of, but it's nice to have them, if no for no other reason, just for eating off it. Don't forget, you can flip that upside down and turn it into a cover as well. So that's sitting on top because of the way they nest. Now, here's one of these clever things that Steve come up with, and it is a, um, a pot grabber, obviously, but a long-handled one, and it's of good quality, and it works really well. Now, I, I like this. Of course, it gives you the offset, get your hands well away from the heat, and yeah, so you can get the shorter ones. They have the shorter version too, but I'm not sure why you would want the shorter version when you can get the longer version. This rack can be used for a couple of things. It can be used for cooking on, obviously directly over uh, a heat source. It can be used as a spacer in the bottom of your pan to get it up off the bottom to lessen the chance of, of things burning. But what is really where it shines is putting it on top of the oven arrangement, and you'll see what I mean in a moment. So it can hold hot coals so you can have heat from below and on top. Put that aside. Now I have a bandana inside here holding on to my pizza stone. So this pizza stone is not one from uh, the firebox stove. For whatever reason, I uh, missed my opportunity to ask for a pizza stone, but they're not, they're readily available. I picked this one up at a thrift store here in Halifax. So um, I'm glad I have it because having a pizza stone for cooking pizza on obviously is great but where it really shines is as a heat sink this in the bottom of your pan will absorb and hold heat and turn your pan and oven set into something approaching cast iron at least in terms of heat retention yes i know it's not cast iron but it'll hold it heat like cast iron so this will go a long way to prevent uh, things from burning and yes you can cook directly on top of it because they are designed for that they're actually designed for cooking pizzas on so do get one. It adds some weight to the kit, but you will appreciate that weight depending on what it is that you're cooking and your style of cooking. And as I mentioned, I just have it wrapped up in a bandana. All right, this is the primary fry pan itself, but I want to come back to that in a moment. And this is known as the deep cowboy plate. So now I'll talk about these pamphlets in a moment as well. So the deep cowboy plate is exactly that, a deep plate. And they call it the cowboy plate, I guess, for larger meals. That Maybe that is the reason. But the beauty of these is not only do they nest in on top, again, because it is hard anodized, it can also be used as a pan all by itself. And it can be turned, the fry pan, the, ma the main unit itself, into an oven. That's a good deep oven. Look at that. That's a good deep oven. There's not too much that you can't put in there Maybe a whole chicken, I'm not sure, but you can put just about everything else that you'll want to bake inside of these. So they work well together. And I mentioned you can use this on top to hold hot coals uh, on top of the pan just to keep them from sliding off. So that works out well. By the way, if you didn't realize, the pot grabber will also work on these as well as the primary pan because they're designed to accommodate, accommodate that deep lip on here. Now, here is the primary pan. This is the centerpiece for this whole cook kit. This was designed by Steve at the firebox stove for uh, cooking out in the woods and being combined with everything else. Now, what makes this special is a couple of things. It is made from aluminum, heavy gauge aluminum at that. The design of it is with a nice rounded bottom, as anyone knows, it makes it so much easier for getting in under uh, anything that you have inside of the pan. But the big thing is, is hard anodized. Now I've said that three times because each of the pans here are hard anodized. What does that mean? Well, a lot of people fear cooking in aluminum. I understand that. Not that I believe there's a risk and health risk in uh, cooking in aluminum for the most part. But if you want to be sure, buy something that's hard anodized. It does a couple of things. It completely seals the aluminum in so that it won't come off in your food and it strengthens the product itself. So this as light as something maybe made of titanium for its given size that is, but is strong like steel. And some people will report it being stronger than steel. Make no mistake, this is not an applied Teflon coating. It is not by itself a non-stick surface. I'll give you some of uh, my experience with that in a minute. Hard anodization is an electrical chemical bonding process that actually turns the aluminum itself into an oxide type material and bonds immediately to the metal. So it's not something that's going to come off. It, this will not come off in your food at all. It is super, super strong and very, very durable. 
However, because it is a non, it's not a non-stick surface, not a Teflon or anything else, it does need to have some type of lubrication, we'll say, inside to keep foods from sticking. Because again, it's still aluminum. The aluminum will uh, distribute the heat well, but it will also heat up very fast and it can overheat. That's one of the downsides to aluminum. Overheat because it heats up so fast is probably the best way to say it. By having it anodized, hard anodized, like it is here, you can season this just like cast iron or carbon steel pans. And there are a great number of videos on how to do that uh, by Steve himself and other people who have gone through the process. It is not complicated. It just takes a little bit of time. I know some people struggle with it. I'll talk about my experience with that in a moment. All right, so these are the components. I'm just going to put them aside for a second. So there are more components you can come by to go with this. But this is the basic large pan size. Now, I mentioned, where did I put those papers? Each of the components comes with these instruction manuals, if you will, or at least product uh, information materials uh, with the sets themselves. And what's really cool is, on the back, seasoning instructions. These are Steve's best experience, best practice seasoning instructions that you can use to season your pans. Now, it's not the only way it can be done. In fact, I haven't. I haven't yet to uh, apply any full-on seasoning with this. It's not necessary, it's just greatly beneficial. As long as you have oil or butter or something that will match the temperature you're going to use in the bottom of your pan, you heat the pan up, you heat the oil up before you apply whatever it is that you're going to cook in here, then the chances of sticking are not all that high. And and the only other trick, of course, and this, this, hap this is true regardless if you season your pan or not, and that's all about heat control. By the way, this applies to not only hard anodized aluminum, but it applies to any other material, including cast iron, carbon steel, stainless steel, or titanium. You have to have something to cook in, oil or butter, or whatever it is your, your um, oil of choice will say, and match it to the smoke point, meaning you get one that has a high smoke point and won't burn in your pan. I like using ghee or olive oil myself, but there are others. And you manage the heat level, Keep it, start low, you're always better off starting low than going high. And you should, at least with a little bit of experience, not experience anything sticking in your pan. You can always turn the heat up as necessary. Now, I know, if you're cooking over propane or that type of a gas, then it's a little easier. And we use this, Gina and I just came back a little while ago from two weeks camping, car camping, Kujua Quack National Park. This was our fry pan. This is what we used. Now, there is a smaller fry pan from a different set that I've reviewed separately that we used for the small, but this was our primary large fry pan and our oven. We used this. We have other ovens, but we wanted to work this out. And as I said, I haven't seasoned it, and it worked perfectly. Now, the things that people uh, have trouble with, and it's a great test of not only the, the product that you're using, but of your personal skill, are eggs. Eggs tend to be the thing that people find hardest to keep from sticking. Well, I can almost guarantee that if you heat this up, especially if you heat it too hot, and don't put anything in like an oil of any type, your egg's going to stick regardless. And that's true. It doesn't matter what type of pan you're using, including carbon steel and cast iron. If you don't have something in your pan and you run it up too high, your eggs are going to stick. However, I can tell you from experience in using this over the two weeks that we have cooked eggs, sunny side up, easy over. Gina likes hers scrambled. I like omelets. I cook them all. No problems at all without being anodized. Again, it's just a matter of having a good, uh, the proper amount, I guess we'll say, of oil in the bottom of the pan. I will anodize this, don't, don't get me wrong. I am gonna anodize this, but you need to know that anodizing is not a one-time thing. It's a one and continuous type of a process. You anodize it and you're actually re-anodizing it every time you use it because it's not a non-care self-stick surface. It takes time for it to build up it t and it has to be maintained. So I just put that out there because there is a bit of misunderstanding about uh, seasoning. 
I seasoned my cast iron, I seasoned my carbon steel, I've even seasoned stainless steel and titanium. They'll all work. Now, honestly, the seasoning doesn't last very long in titanium or stainless steel, but you can do that, and you can do it with this and have it be very functional. Just take your time, and you know what? If it doesn't work out for you, it's easy enough to clean off and start over again. It really is. So I just want to put that out there. I know people have asked about cooking in things like stainless steel and uh, titanium, and I will do a video on doing exactly that and how to keep things from sticking because uh, without a little bit of knowledge and a little bit of practice, eh, you can end up with some meals that you're scrubbing out really hard. Less so in a product like this. All right, so this is the larger of the two sets. Let me clear some space here. And I'll bring in the smaller of the two sets that I only recently arrived. So this is another Kodura bag, Kodura 500 bag. It's ideal. I make my own bags, but I cannot make one any better than this. So if you're, uh, unless you're especially crafty, uh, this is worth spending the extra money on to get this bag to put everything in. So basically, it's a scaled down version, as you can see. I have a smaller grill with this one the smaller uh, camp plate. This one did come with the smaller pizza stone. Thank you for that. It's thinner. I'll tell you, it's thinner than the one, as you can see, I haven't even taken it out. It's thinner than the one I have for the larger set, but it's a good size. Put that aside now. It comes with the smaller uh, cowboy camp plate and the smaller pan. So virtually everything is the same. Now, the only thing I don't have for this set is the cutting board. And I may buy the cutting board from Steve just to complete the set, but cutting boards, they can be purchased, right? You can get your own cutting boards or make your own cutting boards from wood. I have a few that I've made and a few inexpensive ones that will work with this. The whole point is that you have an opportunity to buy everything size to fit together so that it's compact and nested in size. And yes, this came with the longer of the two uh, types of uh, pot grips as well so that you have that. Uh, okay, so as I mentioned, let me put this one aside, bring the large one back in just for the final few comments. Gina and I used this car camping for two weeks and we found that it served perfectly. We retired another pan that we had been using for a few years which did have a non-stick coating in the bottom of it. It was coming off. It will on all pans. And uh, this has replaced it with no regrets whatsoever. It really is nice and compact too. When space is limited in your car, having something like this saves a lot of space. Plus, the design, I can say from experience, works really, really well. Now, once again, the caveat is I have not used this over open flame. I've only used this over propane. I will be using this one over open flame over a firebox stove, most likely one of the sets that I have. But uh, no, I haven't used this one. This one is going to be reserved for car camping primarily. And as I mentioned, the things that you can do with this, anything from just keeping stuff warm inside by doing that to using the larger pan to create an oven, amazing, right? It, it absolutely is so well thought out. Just a matter of finding all the right components to go together to create a set that will nest together and um, you know not take up as much space. Still a little bit heavy, mind you, but a lot lighter than anything you can get in cast iron for sure. Okay, that's it. Let's wrap this video up. All right, let's wrap this video up with a few closing comments for the 8-inch and 10-inch Ultra Cook Kits from the Virebox stove. One more time. All right, let's wrap this video up with a few closing comments for the 8-inch and 10-inch Ultra Cook Kit from the Firebox Stove Store. So, as I mentioned, I don't have a lot of experience on both of these kits, so this cannot be a full review. There's just no way that I could. There is so much that you can do with these kits that it would take a lot of time to amass that experience. I have experience, especially with the larger one. I know it's going to transfer well to my use of the smaller one, and you will see the smaller one especially in use quite a bit over the next so many months and years as I use it for cooking meals while I'm out in the woods. So if it's not a review, what can I say about these in closing? 
quality. That is the number one key thing I'll say about these. These have been well designed and selected by Steve to be of high quality, something you can trust will work the way they are advertised when you're using them. Versatile, that's the other thing. They are versatile in the fact that the more components you can put together in these kits, the more things you can do with them. You can certainly fry, you can bake, you can broil, you can, well, there's and all the full range of things you're likely want to do while cooking, you can do with these kits. And I think the last thing is compact considering what you get. They're designed to nest together, not ultra lightweight, but not all that heavy either. They uh, create a nice balance between having the effectiveness, for the most part, of a cast iron system, but the compactness of an ultra lightweight system. They're not ultra light but they're not all that heavy either, especially the smaller kit. I wouldn't hesitate to carry this out, not on long, long trips, but on day trips and overnight trips, I'd carry this smaller kit. It's not that heavy. And when you consider what it can do for me in my cooking, well worthwhile. Okay, really, that's all I have for you at this time. Watch for these being used in the future because I will be using them without question. If you have any comments or questions, please put them in the comments section below. The information I have on both of these kits as well as the links to the fireboxstove.com will be in the video description. All right, get out and explore and take that path less travel because it will make all the difference. Bye for now.